Because France doesn't have the Pentagon going around the world, blowing people up for their oil reserves. So America's, so I'm saying, you know, America, this is what makes America very interesting is that even though they're getting screwed horribly, the average person still has cheap food, cheap gas, you know, they have a reason compared, they have a reasonably comfortable life, you know, even at this point, even at this late stage of the game. So the U.S. is not motivated, even though you can tell them how bad things are, the average person is still not feeling it. And, and this is what the guardians of this empire in the Washington know. The guys, you know, the neocons, the Rumsfelds, the Cheneys, they know that their job is to just get resources as cheaply as possible and to take the flack, to take all the jibes and the, and the sarcasm and to be portrayed as bad guys. But they, they believe that they're doing the job of keeping the masses you know, in cheap oil and cheap food, and, and, and they've done a job doing that. Now, unfortunately, and what you're saying, what I'm saying, what Gerald Salente is saying, and what other people are saying, is that there reaches a point where there is, uh, they can't sustain it, it's unsustainable. And that shift, when suddenly the debt bomb that bl has blown up Greece and blown up other countries, finally blows up the U.S. economy, and prices double and triple overnight, the, the, the very top, those, those people who orchestrated this whole campaign, they're going to be gone. They're not going to be in the United States. They're going to be living elsewhere. And they're there's the answer. There's the answer. We're going to do a few more segments of calls after the break. But you're right. That's why the rich are leaving is because when they finally implode the U.S., they're going to totally implode it. And you're just going to leave us behind with a bunch of militarized police and TSA uh, running around and boy, I wouldn't want their jobs because you're going to have 400 million guns and a bunch of angry people. It's 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 going to be a mess, Max. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe that the timing is, you know, the, the, all the signs are there, but I can also can understand why people are not not motivated to get up and do anything right now because they, they still have a reasonable lifestyle and they still feel that the risk of losing their reasonable comfort level is is not worth risking and they and just so don't know that by letting the new world order come in they're ensuring their destruction but they'll find out soon enough call straight ahead with max kaiser of maxkaiser.com folks if you go to infowars.com you can see our big article up there concerning navy seal sources they say the false flag is in the offing. That is big news. And they say warn people before it happens because there's one thing these banksters love to pull. That's a war to grab even more power. Let's take a few calls in this short segment the next uh, with Max Kaiser, our guest. Val in Montana, you're on the air with both of us. Welcome. Hi there. Thanks and honor, Alex. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Yeah, your phone doesn't sound too uh, understandable, but... Uh, go ahead and try. Okay, I have a, I have a pretty, pretty bad connection out here. I'm in a pretty remote area. Sorry about that. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, it sounds like you're t it's not the connection. It's the telephone. You're on a hands-free. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I just I just wanted to um, talk about the, well, the sewer main media. Well, that's a good name for them, sewer main media. Yeah, it's, um, it's my term of endearment for them, um, among others. Um, I, I, you know, to pay homage to, uh, uh, Solante every now and then I'll refer to him as a Mustang ranch, <laughs> the, but, pr um, the prostitute media, the, the chicken ranch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard you call him that. Um, I, I want to talk about, uh, I want to ask you guys if, if you know, um, Rush Limbaugh well enough to tell me why he will, you know, because he's, he, he, I was, Max was, um, talking about different ways of um, getting people to to really move this thing in the other direction. And, and real vocal people like yourself and, and others um, have made so much progress. Here we have uh, Rush Limbaugh, who will go so far, and he could just, he could tip this thing over on the, uh, um, you know, the tipping point. It could be, he could move this thing the other way with um, Ron Paul and so forth. What? What is he doing? What, how come he will go so far? Well, I mean, they're in there to be steam valves and control people, and that's why the system has put him forward. There's a lot of people with more talent than Rush Limbaugh, but he's put up there as the big king daddy because he'll play along with the establishment uh, system. I mean, that's very, very, uh, you know, easy uh, answer, and the uh, 
sewer stream media. I appreciate your call. That's a good question. Max, where do you see the sewer stream media going? Well, I mean, this is an interesting question because Rush Limbaugh and Bill O'Reilly and Michael Savage, these guys are what I call the shock right, the right wing on the shock. I know I don't want to get into a whole discussion about right versus left. I just want to, for the purposes of making this point, let me digress. Okay, he is on the shock right. There is nobody in America who's on the shock left. There is on MSNBC, you've got Rachel Maddow. She's slightly, she's a centrist. You've got Amy Goodman of Democracy Now. See, she's in the center. Tom Hartman, who's on RT, he's also a biggest so-called progressive radio host in America. I don't even think he's on the left either. He's a centrist. There is no left. There is no shock left. Imagine if Max Kaiser had a three-hour every morning talk show on a major network in America. Number one, Rush Limbaugh's ratings would collapse. Number two, all heck would break loose because suddenly you've got both a shock right and a shock left. There's no balance. But Max, whatsoever. I wouldn't call you left. I don't even go off those terms. They've tried to I put know, up I, the I, uh, I, young I turd I guy. I don't want to digress into this whole right left business, but but in the case of the radio landscape in America, and you've got your show, which is completely independent, and you've cobbled together this massive audience by dint of sheer brute strength. You've just gone outside of the mainstream, and yet you've got this huge audience. But other than that, it's a wasteland. There is no opposing voices. No, you're right. America. You're right. Stay there. But I was just looking at the Rothschilds on Wikipedia. Hundreds of palaces, castles, more than the royal family of England, uh, just owning giant combines all over the world, major stock in every major central bank, uh, unknown trillions in overall aggregate wealth, and they'll sue a newspaper for saying he's a puppet master uh, and manipulating Russian oligarchs. I mean, it just shows how they try to use the courts now against people, but thank God the courts ruled against them. Uh, it, it's just, it's super creepy, Max. Well, first of all, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to ask, is there something I should read into the fact that you're having me on your show on Valentine's Day? I mean, I, I know you like me and I like you, but I don't know if I like you like that. Okay, Max, uh, I just want to say, I told him about a week ago, I said, I want to get Max <laughs> Kaiser on and they set you up today. And so, you know, that's what's going on. Was uh, that yeah, intentional well, that somebody set him up on Valentine's Day? Oh, uh, it's so sweet. I didn't know you thought of me like that. Ah, uh, well, Max, I, I, uh, I have to be honest. I, I did never even think of such a thing until now. But you thanks know, to I'm, you I'm, that you've entered I'm, that into my mind. And and uh, here I am, just you know, enjoying a nice glass of tangy tangerine, having a having a fantastic time. Now, anyway, so the Rothschilds are, in fact, um, they have, you know, that scene in, um, you know, in a good movie reference is in the movie The Sting, where the, the criminal is on the golf course, and he says, I want you to go break that guy's legs. And he says, gee, boss, he's just a low-level grifter. And he goes, well, you know, if we let a low-level grifter get away, you know, someday they'll be coming after us. We got to be, you know, take care of this. And this is the way they think. If there's any challenge at all, in any sense, they will go after you with the full force of, the, of everything they have to put you down. Because they, they don't want a single scintilla of dissent uh, to any way to challenge their monopoly, uh, pricing, rent-seeking, empire-building kleptocracy. Well, you're right, and they want a global government with carbon taxes to shut everybody down while ignoring all the real problems in the environment. Why are the elites allowing all this GMO stuff that's destroying the Earth's original biosphere and endangering everything? And why do the elites allow the military to detonate hydrogen bombs in the upper atmosphere? I mean, it, and, and it's like they're trying to destroy the planet or something. Well, Monsanto, of course, the big ad, big, big seller of genetically modified seeds, the, the business model is quite remarkable because they figured out that you could trade seeds like a currency, uh, in this case, the Monsanto Terminator seeds that don't reproduce. So you have to buy those seeds uh, continuously every single year, and you have to borrow money to buy those seeds. This is why 
Uh, the exact number, you, I, I don't have at my fingertips, but something like 2,000 Indian farmers a month commit suicide because Monsanto has priced agriculture so far out of reach of the average Indian farmer that they simply kill themselves. And that's, they, they approach agriculture the way Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan approach the credit markets or approach the finance market. They fill it with derivatives. They completely overextend it with massive financialization of something called agriculture. And then they subject the people who are supposed to be using this product, farmers, to onerous debt loads to the point where they're indentured servants or they kill themselves. And quite frankly, they don't care. Monsanto, of course, has a track record of this type of behavior going back to Agent Orange and the Vietnam War and all kinds of other transgressions that the company's been guilty of. That makes them an extraordinary amount of money. The board of directors is full of the same guys on the board of directors for Halliburton or Exxon or any of these other major corporations who are part of the Pentagon or part of the Wall Street banking establishment. And they all swap notes and they go to Davos. And of course, remember last year at Davos, they floated the idea of recapitalizing the global economy with $100 trillion worth of fresh debt. Which will all go to them and then they'll pose as our savior. Sorry to some of the other callers. Didn't get to you. Max, great job. Thank you for joining us in chronicling our spiraling descent into the New World Order? The answer is, say no to the New World Order. See you back tonight, 7 o'clock. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right.